Hey kiddos, it's Bonus Mom here. I did a live stream recently where I showed you how to make a plastic tote bag out of plastic shopping bags. This is my example. I've had this bag for something like 23 years and everything in this particular bag came from a shopping bag. How did I do this? I'm going to show you. I made myself some plastic yarn, okay? I got some shopping bags and usually they come from the grocery store like this. The first thing I do is try to turn this shopping bag back into what it looked like when it came from the grocery store. Okay? And then I fold it over once and then I fold it over one more time. Get it nice and flat. I grab myself a pair of scissors and I start at the end of the bag and I clip off the connection at the end of the bag. Then, for how I do it, I cut these things in something like an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half strips. I just eyeball it. I get anywhere from six to seven to eight strips a bag. If I'm doing a lot of these at once, I tend to save these parts and I'll recycle that. What I end up with are loops. Okay? Consider the loops as two big rubber bands. Have you ever connected two rubber bands? You put one loop over top of the other loop, and then you reach underneath and you pull. It knots in the middle, and you have the beginnings of plarn. And you just keep doing it. I put one loop over top the other loop. And then I reach under and I pull it, handling it kind of gently. Sometimes your knots don't tighten up really closely. You can gently tug a little bit and they'll tighten up on you. And away I go. I'm making plastic yarn, otherwise known as plarn. It takes for an average tote bag, something like 150 to 200 bags. So you're gonna be doing this for a good long while. I tend to make the bags that I make out of half double crochets. You can get three stitches out of one loop. So that gives you an idea of just how many shopping bags that you're gonna need. So I've made myself a ball of plastic yarn or plarn and I'm getting ready to begin my bag. For me, for what's comfortable for me, I tend to use a K hook or a six and a half millimeter hook. You can pick whatever is comfortable for you. Because there's already a loop in the end of my plarn, then I just make a loop wrap it around my finger, make a loop, but I try to pull it through. It's hard to do so you can see it. So my loop is pretty dang small. I want my crochet hook to fit through it, but I want it kind of tight. For a normal size tote bag, I would probably crochet about 18 chain stitches. I'm trying to get my needle on here. So I'm going to chain 18 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As you can see, actually, even with the knots in it, this plarn slides past my needle, my hook, fairly easily. I don't need any. Okay. Eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, come on now, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so the base of my bag is going to start with 18 stitches eight on either side. Okay, now I'm going to chain two more, and that counts as my first half double crochet stitch. Then I'm going to do a half double crochet, two stitches, away in the second stitch away from 
right in here, the second stitch away from my hook. And I'm going to do another double crochet. That puts two double crochets in that first loop. Then I'm going to crochet all the way down the other side, the first side. I'm doing half double crochets. The bag that I showed you was single crochets. You can also do half double, I mean, you can do full double crochets if you like. However, for a tote bag, sometimes if you do double crochets with this plarn, you have a greater risk of something falling through the hole in the bottom of the bag. A dime or a nickel or a ballpoint pen, something like that. So basically, I'm just going down the first side of the bag with half double crochets. It's always awkward for me when I first get started, but you know what? As you do it, you'll get a little bit more fluid with it. Always pick a needle, a hook. I always say needle. Always pick a hook that's comfortable. That you can make it, you know, loose, but it's going to hang together. Just whatever you're comfortable working with. See how it's coming along? Sometimes I stop and kind of pull on it. Your stitches are not going to be pretty and uniform because you're working with something you cut with hand, with your hands and you didn't measure. But I promise, in the end of the tote bag, that really won't matter. You'll have something handy and something that will last for a really long time. These gray bags that I'm using are the ubiquitous Walmart bags. When I really was doing this full time, I had people from all over the place sa saving for me every pretty shopping bag they ever got. That can kind of be fun. Okay, I'm down to the original loop that I started the whole process with. Remember that loop right there? That's my last one. I'm going to put three half double crochets in this loop. In the same loop, I'm going one, maybe I'm going one, one, two, it's always awkward when I start, I apologize for that, two, and three. That's what's going to make the bottom of my bag get bigger as I go along. Sometimes you kind of get big holes. It'll pull a funny way or whatever. If that really bothers you, just when you're done, go get yourself another piece of plastic, put it through there, and tie the thing together, and it'll work fine. Now I'm going to crochet all the way down the other side. Probably not going to keep you on here while I do that. And then I'll do one more stitch in the bottom of where I started before, where I already had two stitches. Then I'm going to do four or five rows of this, and on either end... I'm going to match them. I probably will add three more stitches in the next row. I will probably add six more stitches in the row after that till I get the base of my bag the size that I want. This is the one that I've started that's a special order. And you can see the bottom. See that? That actually has five rows where I've added stitches at either end. Bonus mom, how do I know how many stitches to put where? Find yourself a tote bag pattern online if you have any questions. There are hundreds of them. And just do what they say in the pattern. The only thing that you have to remember is this plarn crochets big like the way chunky yarn would. So you'll have to adjust the number of stitches that you do. That's it, folks. It's not any harder than this. Hope to see you again next time. I'm going to tell you how to take a used plastic tablecloth and make strips that you put together on that, and then you can add some colors to your bags. Good luck. Hey, kiddos. Here's the Plarn tote bag that I'm working on right now. You can see I've gotten a distance up the bag. I'm using my half double crochet stitch because it's the one I like the best. See the purple? That's that tablecloth I talked about the other day. But today, I'm going to show you how to take a tablecloth and begin to um, turn it into plarn, strips of tablecloth, and crochet with them. I've cut my strips. You saw that in the last tutorial. 
and I can open it all up and I'll have an eight foot long strip, which will do 10 to 15 stitches, something like that. But then you have to tie a knot in it or something every eight feet and that can be kind of cumbersome. So I have another way of doing it. I wanna share a little hack with you. So what I'll do is I open up two of my strands, got two strands of pink plastic going here. And I get the end of each one and be very careful you don't get two ends of the same piece of plastic. That way you'll just be making a circle and that won't work very well. I usually pay a lot of attention to my farm to be sure that I have it wide enough depending on how durable the tablecloth is because some are way more durable than others. I open up a piece of parchment paper, lay it down in front of me, have a towel on my table because I'm gonna be using some heat and I lay my pieces of plastic out. There's piece one. I'm gonna take the second one and I'm gonna overlap it about an inch. Because I just cut these things with scissors or a rotary cutter, I have to say nothing is really measured. It's eyeballed. Can you see that? It gets a little bit darker kind of where the join is and you can probably see it. So then I fold down my parchment paper and the purpose of the parchment paper is to keep the plastic off my yarn. Yes, to keep the you plastic off my iron. Thank you, Pixel. I'll cut out these interjections. I don't know, I think they're kind of cute. Okay. So this is a little Dritz uh, sewing iron that I found it would be great if you're doing patchwork and quilting to do seams, but I use it for this. It doesn't take much heat when it's turned on high. Let me peek and see. Oh, I missed it a little bit. Okay, look at this. Now I have 16 feet of plarn. So I'm gonna do it again, cause I'm clever that way. Lay down my plastic, get another piece, overlap it a little bit, about an inch. Fold it down, know where it is. Darker, darker tablecloths, you can usually kind of see it through the plastic. Iron it, let it cool just a heartbeat. And there we go. Oh, this one didn't get You'll run into that. It got a little bit stuck. I hit it with my iron. That's not gonna show in the finished project. So obviously watch out with your iron. Hey kiddos, here's the Plarn tote bag that I'm working on right now. See the purple? That's that tablecloth I talked about the other day. But today I'm gonna show you how to take a tablecloth and begin to um, crochet with them. Okay, I am ready to put the pretty pink in my tote bag. I will still be doing the half double crochet stitch and I can start anywhere I want to, but I'm not gonna start right where this is. I'm gonna pick a different place. I use a K hook. Use the one that is comfortable for you, whatever size you like, whatever gives you the size bag, looking bag that you want, go for that. Uh, the K hook, it's a boy hook, and it's the six and a half millimeter. And I just start anywhere. Hook through the stitch, wrap this around. I really don't have to tie it off or do extra loops or anything like that. The nature of the plastic is it pretty much holds itself in place if you crochet over it and you don't need to do anything else. And now I'm going to crochet my tote bag. Chain two for the first stitch, and then I'm going to crochet some half double crochets, which is plastic, plarn over the hook, reach through the stitch in front, go underneath my excess plarn from where I started. I'm trying to do this and explain it's very hard at the same time. Pull it through and make my half double crochet stitch. If you're not sure about that, you can certainly do it with single crochet. You can do double crochet stitches. Whatever works for you is just fine. It's your bag. Do what you like. There are lots of different patterns out there to make tote bags and basically you could make any tote bag that you wanted to out of plarn. The thing is, your counts of stitches would be way off because obviously yarn is much thinner than plarn. So there we are, folks. 
I'm going along and I'm going to add three rows of pink. Then there will be another row of gray, three more rows of tan or khaki, the Kroger bags. And then I'm going to have another color of tablecloth. After that, I'll be back with another tutorial to show you how I do the handles. Until then, kiddos, happy crocheting. Be sure to check with me, send any messages if you have any questions, and let's get it going. Happy hooking. Hey, kiddos. If you have been following along with me in my tutorials, and you've maybe been working on a tote bag yourself, you're at the same point that I am, which this tote bag is ready for handles. You basically have three choices about the kind of handle that you can have on a plastic tote bag if you're doing it this way. You can have two grip handles, one on either side of the bag that your hand fits in, you pick it up, you grab it, and you go. You can have two longer handles that would fit over an average person's shoulder that they can kind of tuck it up there, have it kind of high underneath your arm, and away you go. Or, option number three, you can have two grip handles plus a long, one long hook or a, a strap that goes from one side of the bag to the other, would hang over your shoulders and would hang a little bit lower, more like at waist level. So that's the first decision you want to make, and I'm going to tell you how to do each one of these. This is the way I do it. You can certainly check out tutorials and maybe have a different idea. So I'm ready to start my next row and this is going to be the row that has the beginning of my handle in it so i'm going to get my measuring device here and i'm going to measure the width of the bag on one side we're talking about 15 and a half inches so that's like seven and three quarters ought to be about the center of the bag and looking at that that's that right there so I'm gonna put a stitch marker there. I'll tell you what I used to use before I got these fancy stitch markers. I used bread ties. And then because I'm a little bit obsessive, not too bad, but a little bit, I'm gonna measure. Yeah, that's like seven and three quarter inches and that's like seven and three quarter inches, perfect. It depends on how thorough you wanna be. I tend to flip the bag over. I'm trying to keep that on there so you can see what I'm doing and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and that's just right about in there. Does that match up? Yeah, right there. Okay, I think we got it. And I stick a, I put a stitch marker in this side. Okay, now because I'm a little bit obsessive, gonna meggle, meggle it. That's, yep, pretty dang good, folks. I'm ready to go. So I'm ready to make my hook row. This again, it's not rocket science, okay? Get it close. That's as close as you, as you need to be. Got my K hook. I'm ready to start my next row. I am doing the half double crochet. I'm going to get that out of the way. It's in my way. It's bugging me. Okay, so I'm starting my new row. I'm going to crochet Half double crochet stitches. Whoops, if I can get my deal going here. To within eight stitches of the center of this bag. I don't count the center stitch as one of the eight. So, and you can mark this with a stitch marker, marker too, and you could do it beforehand. I usually don't. This is a great project and it's a lot of fun, but I will tell you that it is not the easiest thing you're ever gonna crochet. Let me count some stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is right there. Okay, so I got like three more stitches to do and I'm gonna double check my counts. I'm doing two over the shoulder bags because over the shoulder handles because that's what the person who wants this bag wants. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I were doing grip handles, I would leave six stitches. Now I'm gonna make I'm leaving the eight. I'm gonna start to chain. And I'm gonna chain 30 stitches and I'm gonna look at it. That was one. I do them kind of loosely two, three, because I'm going to have to crochet in them. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm trying to do this on camera. I'm just so aware of what I'm doing. Ten that I'm very awkward, as you can see. The hook's going great. Bonus mom, awkward. Eleven. Why it matters is so your handles will hopefully be roughly the same length. 11, that was a little bit tight. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's just a double check. 71 year olds can still count. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Then I'm going to look at it. Mm, that I don't think that's quite enough for a hook, for a shoulder. I don't think that's quite enough to get a shoulder. That's 30, and I really couldn't remember. It's been so long since I've done one of these, so I'm going to go to 40. 1, 5, 10. That's pretty good. I think I can live with that one. I think that'll do it. That's 40 chains. But it depends on the, you know, the size of your arm, your shoulder, whatever. Then I take my bag. I'm going to fold it so I can see what I'm doing. And I count. Let's see. Let's double check. I don't count the stitch that my stitch marker is in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I actually started my chain in the ninth hook, so I'm gonna, I mean the ninth loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually in the ninth, I'm gonna do a double, a half double crochet. And then I'm gonna go all the way around my bag to the other side. And I will do the whole thing again. So we are working on the first row of our handle on our uh, tote bag that we're hoping to finish. And I'm around to the second side. And I have counted my eight stitches. I'm actually, I did a half double crochet in the ninth, the stitch before that, and now I'm ready to chain. One thing I want to mention to you that I haven't, that's a personal hack of bonus moms in doing the half double crochet, is I only crochet in the top two loops right in there. That's, and I leave this extra little one on the back alone. And that sort of fills in through the stitches and doesn't leave quite as big a hole between stitches. That's just the way I do it. You get to do it how you want to. So I'm going to chain another 40 stitches. One, five, ten. Chain stitches are hard. Eleven, twelve, but I love the grip on this hook. 13, they're going to be hard to crochet to through 14, 15, 20, 30, and 40. So, I have my 40 stitches. I'm on the second half. I'm going to count. I do not count the stitch that has my stitch marker in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm going to half double crochet in that ninth stitch. I'm going to finish my row. If you wanted a handle that wouldn't last, you'd be done now. Okay, I'm back around to the beginning of the row. Because I chained one and did a double crochet in the same stitch, I ignore the chain one, I go to the double crochet. Now, you have a choice on your bag, and it doesn't hurt to hold it up, and yeah, you know what, look at that. They feel even in my hands, so I'm really thrilled. You have a lot of choices here if you're doing this kind of bag. You get to decide what you want your next two or three rows to be. Because it's an over the shoulder bag and a bigger one, I'm actually going to do three more rows. I'm going to do another row of the khaki, one row of the white, and then one row of the purple, which will bring the color from the bottom of the bag 
back into the top. They're going to be regular double half double crochets because I want the wider stitch. Some people from this point on might choose to just do single crochets and have a sturdy handle, but a much smaller one. The choices are up to you. Happy crocheting. I'll catch you at the end. One more TikTok is coming. Be sure and look for the bag is finished. Thanks, kiddos. Hey kiddos, so I'm really coming along on this tote bag. As I showed you in the last video, I have chained um, my, my beginnings of the final three rows and the handles on my tote bag. I had told you in the original TikTok that I did 40 chain stitches. We decided that wasn't enough and I went with 50. So I've started a brand new row. I am going to half double crochet over to the beginning of the chain handle and I will show you what I do there. So I'm still doing half double crochets and I'm actually going to do half double crochets with this K hook, which is a six and a half millimeter hook all the way around this entire row. So I will be crocheting in both sets of chain stitches. For that reason, because you're gonna be crocheting in those stack chains, it is always a good idea to make them as loose as you can including you may want to use a larger size hook, whatever is comfortable for you. I'm ready to start my chain. Basically, I just keep going. I'm gonna go through the top two loops of the chain, grab my hook, wrap around, pull through, and continue to do half double crochets. Is it tricky? Yep, sure is. This, in my way of thinking, is the hardest part of the bag. Just because all of you who crochet know, sometimes it's very difficult to crochet in chains. And the plastic is particularly difficult. So bear with me, this is what I'm doing, and I'll meet you up at the end of the bag. Kiddos, I'm at the end of the row. I have done half double crochet all the way around my bag and I'm back to the beginning. So I do my final half double crochet. This is the end of the khaki for me. So I go into the first stitch of the last row, pull through, pull through, cut my yarn right there, my plarn. I keep saying it wrong. And I'm done with khaki. I want to bring in the bottom of the bag into the top of the bag. So my next row is also going to be half double crochet and it's gonna be the white. So I'm roughly gonna start where I was because that works out pretty well. And because there's a loop already there in my plarn, all I have to do is hook my loop, loop through it, pull it through. And then the way that I begin a row is I do one chain and I do not count it as a stitch. And I'm gonna do one more chain, which is put this hook down, which has kind of gotten warm. I'm gonna get a cold metal hook because it'll slide through the yarn a little bit better. And I begin half double crochet. And I'm gonna do a row of white half double crochet all the way around the bag. This time I'm going into stitches instead of chains. And it will actually go much more quickly. I'll meet you back at the beginning and tell you what I'm going to do for the very last row of my tote bag made out of plarn. I have finished my row of uh, half double crochet with the white. I'm finishing it off just by doing, I, I, did, I did a slip stitch into the first stitch from the previous row. And I'm going to crochet over this as I crochet around the bag and that'll be plenty enough to secure it. My very last row is going to be single, oops, single crochet purple. I lost my hook. Which will carry the color from the bottom of the bag to the top. Thank you, Pixel. And I think I'll start this row on the opposite side of the bag just to kind of keep the look cleaner. When I'm doing with tablecloths, you don't have to really tie a knot in it or anything. This stuff just stays where you crochet it. So I just start my very last row by folding my plarn over, pulling it up. And I'm gonna do one, actually, I'm gonna do one um, 
I, I caught it. I'm going to do one more chain, and that's going to be my first single crochet for the last row. And I'm just going all the way around, this time with single crochets, trying to catch over the tablecloth as I go. And I'll meet you back at the end, and we should have a finished tote bag. See you in a few. I am finished with my bag now, but do have one piece of plarn left that I'm going to have to hide in the bag. So I get a little bit smaller hook out and I just dig into my past stitches, loop this and weave it through half a dozen stitches. And because it is plarn, it will pretty much just stay there. So I do that, take out my stitch markers and my plastic tote bag is finished. I'll cut off the extra plarn later. What do you think? How does it look? Are you ready to go shopping? You just wouldn't believe how much you can get in there.